Today, I would like to highlight two points about the Gospel. The first is about love, the second is about justice. So, first point. We are just a few hours away from the fulfillment of the Passion, and the disciples are beginning to acknowledge the departure of Jesus, his death. Faced with the possibility of that absence, they are no longer able to think clearly. It is Jesus who tries to find the key to the problem by giving us the most beautiful lesson on love. Loving means that at some point we must take a step back so that the other person emerges. There comes a time when loving one another has to pass through a distance. If a father or mother never gives space to their children, letting them make decisions, find their way, become themselves, these children will never grow. Yet it is so difficult for us to conceive love in this way. With the excuse that love is presence, we never take any step back and we can end up controlling other people's lives. But the presence of love is different from that intrusiveness that ruins everything, even love itself. Jesus himself, who is the Son of God, knows how to create a fruitful distance with his disciples. He does not abandon us or creates an empty absence, but an absence where the Holy Spirit can arrive. And the Holy Spirit helps the disciples put into practice, into action, what they have listened to and witnessed for the past three years with Jesus. What Jesus did with his disciples, we ourselves are called to do in our lives, in all those relationships that we define as love. And my second point is about justice. The Pharisees and the scribes have not disappeared. They changed shape and form, but still live within Christian communities and groups. Just try to talk about God's love, that God forgives everyone, that God loves everyone. You will see that at a certain moment, some people will start to gently disagree. Then they might explode and say, yes, but God is also justice, and the sinner will not escape divine justice. God is certainly just. But justice in relation to God means nothing but fidelity. In the Jewish world, the righteous is the faithful person. When Joseph, for example, in Matthew's Gospel is declared righteous, that doesn't mean our moral sense of righteousness. But Joseph is described as a faithful person. When we speak of justice in the Old and New Testaments, we do not mean the justice of the court. We mean God's faithfulness. When we say that God is just, it means that God is faithful. And what is God's faithfulness? God has made a pact with God's people. The people can betray him abandon him, refuse him, but God will always remain faithful. The faithful love of God manifested in Jesus is the visible expression of the faithful love of the Father. Until the end, Jesus tried to conquer Judas with his love. Judas betrayed him, denied him, but Jesus, until the end, offers him his love. In the loving care of God for us, God's justice is manifested. So today, let us open our hearts 
to receive the Holy Spirit and rest in God's faithfulness to us. Amen.